Good morning, folks. I agree with some of what the state has just mentioned to you in opening. On November 10th, 2018, in Delaware County, Iowa, Amy Mullis was viciously and deliberately murdered. The issue that you will have to decide in this case is really not who did it, but whether Mr. Mullis did. The evidence is much along the lines of what you've just heard. On November 10th, on that Saturday morning, Todd and his son Tristan, who's 13 years old, went to another farm that they farm and manage, do some chores. There had been some chisel plowing, that's my term for it, had been done on that property the day before. And Todd's plan was to do some more on that Saturday. It had gotten cold, the ground was too frozen, so that plan had to be abandoned. Todd and Tristan returned back to the home place where the two younger children and Amy were up and about. They had a small breakfast and Todd and Tristan announced or stated that they were gonna go out to the hog barns and get ready for a delivery of small pigs. The Mullises had these large hog confinement barns. And maybe I'll use, lose, use the wrong terminology here, but these are giant barns, much like a football field. And they bring in small pigs when, they weigh just, when they're being weaned off the sow. And then they're raised to butcher weight and hauled off the farm and sold. They were getting ready for a delivery of those small pigs. And there was a lot of uh, mechanical things to be done in the barns. So they, and their plan was to go out and start that process. A few days before, I believe on November 6th, you'll learn that Amy had had a medical procedure. She was having some uh, bleeding problems and the doctors had recommended that she have a, have a minor surgery, which it was done. I believe that you will hear that the testimony was that Chief felt cooped up, had been in the house for several days, and wanted to join Todd and Tristan. It was her idea to go out and help work in the barns. And she did. And you'll hear that they, when they got out in the barn, each of them, Todd, Tristan, and Amy, set about to do different things. Todd was going to take these pipes, and I think you'll hear them referred to as nipple feeders. Uh, they were actually water pipes with small nipples on them so that these small pigs used to nursing off their mother will now nurse water from these pipes once they've been put in these pens. Todd was doing that. Tristan was getting these heaters that had been stored in a storage area that were, he would bring these to each of the pens and set them out ready to be installed. Amy was taking, there was uh, light fixtures above these pens in, in uh, walkways. And they were, as you might imagine, the, 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 with all these hogs, the manure and the smell, that there was lots of flies, not in November, but there had been when there had been pigs in the barn, the large hogs. So Amy set about to clean those fixtures off, to take the, the, the fly feces off of the the globes around those lights. And to do so, she couldn't just stand and reach up and do it. She would use a, a pail sometimes or stand up on, on the uh, fence uh, partitions if, she, if there was a place to put her foot. And that's what they did, uh, each kind of doing their own thing, all within proximity to one another. At some point, Todd noticed, Tristan noticed, that Amy seemed to maybe lose her balance, comment upon her dizziness. And this, this is something that Todd had witnessed even before she had had the medical procedure on November 6th. 
his comment was, Honey, take it easy. Why don't you go back in the house? Don't push yourself. She wanted to help. So she continued on, and there was again uh, observation of her unsteadiness. So finally she agreed that she would stop what she was doing. Still wanting to help. Todd says, if, if you want to do something, there was a, a mother cat had a litter of kittens, and they were being kept in the shop, which was in between the hog barns, a little off to the, as you look towards the house, a little off to the right. Somehow the mother cat had gotten run over by a skid steer or a pickup or a tractor or something. So the kittens were, aban or, were uh, abandoned, not abandoned, they were just there by themselves. And each time that they'd open the door to get equipment in and out, there was a fear that they were going to run over some kittens, upset the, the smaller kids. So Todd says, there's a pet carrier over in that old red shed. You can go over and get it. Just put it up by the shop on your way into the house. OK. She leaves the hog barn. Todd and Tristan continue to work. They're doing these two chores of theirs. At some point, and I believe you'll hear that Tristan said the only time that he ever was out of his father's sight was to go into uh, an office area. It, it's more of a just a separated area off the main part of the hog barn where there's uh, some equipment. And he got a drink of water, kind of just turned the faucet on. There's a hose hooked to it. And he thought he did that maybe twice and was out of the main hog area for a very short period of time. Todd was still in there. He was in there when he went out to get a drink. He was in there when he went back. They worked for some period of time, and I don't think there's a real good handle on what that period of time is. Maybe an hour, hour and a half. And at some point, they look out towards the house, and where you can see up by the shop where this pet carrier would have been placed by Amy per this plan, and it wasn't there. And Todd says to Tristan, why don't you go see what's going on and get that pet carrier if it's not up there. Tristan goes to the shed where an awful, awful thing had occurred. Tristan yells for his father. He comes. He finds her in the shed horribly with his corn fork stuck in her back. And you'll see pictures of this shed where you get in these sliding doors, which were kind of frozen open, but a pretty short width. And then you go in, and there's a bunch of these plastic farm uh, sprayer tanks. And you kind of turn to the left, and then you go down this hallway. And in fact, down that hallway, there's some auger screws laying on the, on the floor. But there you see this pet carrier that's partially pulled out from a shelf. Amy's out laying on her face, or on her hands and knees, crunched over by the, near the door. It's so horrible, Todd cannot get her out of the shed without taking that fork out of her back because the doors weren't wide enough. There wasn't enough room to move her. So he did it. And he had Tristan help him get her in the pickup, literally laid across their laps, called 911 and proceeded to drive as fast as he could towards medical care. The 911 operator directs them to a certain location where the, uh, he or she, I can't remember, is sending law enforcement to meet them and ultimately emergency equipment. And they meet on a roadway out in the country where Amy is then transferred from the pickup into an ambulance and taken to the hospital where she is soon pronounced dead. Tristan was taken by a friend, Michael Krogman, from the scene back to the farm. Two deputies had asked for him to do that, for, Mike, for Tristan to go back there so that he, they, he could show them what it, where he found his mom, a little bit about what happened. And Tristan did that. Um, 
Then Tristan went to the hospital where he meets with family. He's questioned briefly there by law enforcement. He basically tells you the story that I just told you. Not, maybe not in quite so much detail. Todd did state that he thought he had no other explanation. She went in the barn, she ends up with a fork in her back. She must have fell. He had no idea. But we will learn, you will learn, that she didn't fall on the fork. That there was four times on this fork, and you'll see it here in the courtroom, that there was more than four wounds to Amy's body. That she was struck more than once. But she, when, when she was there working in the barn, and you'll see pictures of her clothing, she had on several layers of clothes, from a, a light shirt to another shirt. I believe, I think it was three layers. And one was a fairly heavy coat. So Todd couldn't see the wounds. Uh, there was some blood, and that was about it quite a bit of blood. So his explanation was the only one he could think of. This wasn't something he manufactured. It was like, what, what else could it be? She was dizzy in the, in the hog barn. Here she, we find her with this fork in her back. She was trying to get this pet carrier out of the shed. I don't have any other explanation. And that story remains consistent when he's questioned more to, uh, completely by law enforcement. Um, Tristan, at the farm, at the hospital, later questioned at a school, and later questioned at a professional, it's a CPC center, I think they call it, at St. Luke's Hospital in Cedar Rapids, where professionals are, who interview children who have been victims or witnesses, uh, he was interviewed there, and again, his story remains basically the same. Yes, I expect you're going to hear a history of this marriage. That approximately five years before this all happened, Amy was working at the hospital, I believe in Manchester, and that she had an affair with an individual. Todd ultimately learned about that affair. They, at the suggestions of friends and family, they went through counseling, and they worked through it. I believe you'll hear testimony from Todd that his marriage was important, his children were important, the, the farm life was important to him, but not so important that he's going to murder the mother, mother of his children and his wife. There will be sometimes perhaps confusing text messages, uh, phone uh, contacts or information about what was said by Amy. But I think you will find that Todd continued to work towards maintaining his marriage throughout all this confusion. But behind his back, Amy was having a significant sexual affair with someone who actually came to the farm on a regular basis. A gentleman by the name of Jerry Frazier. He worked for a company that contracted these hogs into these various hog confinement facilities. And I think he'll testify that he was responsible for calling upon and servicing numerous hog operations like the Mullises. So he knew the farm, he knew the people, he'd come there on a regular basis, and he and Amy would have business connect, uh, conversations, business uh, communication, I guess I'll call it, about feed and, and medicine for the hogs and things that were going on on a, on a business level. But he would say that in the spring of 2018, it became a flirting thing and then it became a sexual thing. And, and um, it was extensive that he and Amy would meet at various locations at various times and it was sexual. In, I'm going to say you'll, you'll find that somewhere around the first part, at least the first half of July, 
Todd saw some phone bills that sh would show the amount of messaging going back between Amy and Mr. Frazier. And it bothered him. Bothered him to the extent that he called Jerry Frazier and said, hey, what's going on? Is there, is there something going on? Frazier, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm just a nice guy. Amy wants the kids to get involved in, in showing pigs at fairs and stuff like that. And I help out a lot of people. And we got our regular contacts about the, the hog operation there at the Mullis Farm. Don't worry, Todd. Todd even calls his wife. And she thinks Todd's crazy. She doesn't suspect anything. And, and I think it's pretty fair to assume that uh, Jerry Frazier convinced his wife that Todd was a little wacky and don't, don't pay attention to him. The affair continued. There was plans to meet at the state fair in Des Moines in August. Amy was telling people as soon as Jerry is, is ready and his kids have graduated then I'm going to get a divorce and so forth and so on. But I don't think Jerry was quite into it like she was. But it's, he admits it still continued right up until just a few days before this November 6th medical procedure. So I, I'm not going to try to lay out exactly all these text messages and, and communications, be, but there will be some. The internet searches that the state mentioned, there were phones, there were Kindles, there were there was an iPad or excuse me a laptop, and there was an iPad, an iPad used extensively for the hog and farming operation. It would actually be taken out in the tractors when you were doing like, as I understand it, and I hope I'm not wrong, like GPS planning that you could coordinate with this iPad, and also it was used in the hog operation because it it had better Wi-Fi or whatever the connections. I'm, I'm terrible with this stuff. I'm too old. But it, it had better connections, so it'd be taken out in the shop. And that a dispute may be as to how many people had access to that and what the significance of these searches are, when they were made, and why they were made. Folks, again, Ty Mullis' statements about Amy falling on a fork and dying accidentally was a honest, legitimate, on-the-spot explanation or an attempt to explain what happened to her. It was wrong. She was murdered. Horribly. But I believe that you will find that not only at the end of this case that there's a reasonable doubt about Mr. Mullis's guilt, but there's no doubt at all.